Hello, my name is Diana. What is your name? My name is Dr. Jesse Sanders. Ah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How did you become a fish doctor? So I did my undergraduate training in marine biology and actually did a lot of work for the local aquarium when I was working as an undergraduate student. And then I went to veterinary school and specialized in fish medicine. Oh, that's very interesting. What inspired you to do this? I've always loved fish. I've had them ever since I was a little kid and especially working with them at the aquarium. I had a lot of chance to see all the care and dedication that really goes into their care and keeping and want to pass that on to all of my customers and clients. What is the difference between a fish doctor and a veterinarian? <laughs> Uh, not a lot, so I have the same veterinary training as any other uh, private practice doctor, but in addition to learning about cats and dogs, pigs, sheep, goats, and horses, I decided to add all the aquatic species on as well. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of animals. Uh, yeah, it is a lot of animals. <laughs> yeah. How do you uh, do your job and uh, do you perform surgeries? Um, so for my job, when I go out to see a client that either has a tank or a pond, it's very important that we test the water quality first. Just like the air we breathe, the water that a fish swims in contributes to its health significantly. And then usually we'll take a fish out, sedate it down, give them a full physical exam like you would or a cat or a dog, and that gives us a good indication of the overall health of a system. And yes, we do do surgery on fish. They are anesthetized just the same as a cat or a dog, but instead of using an inhalant anesthetic, we use a powder that mixes in with the water so the fish can take it up over their gills. And then procedures pretty much go on the same as you would a cat or a dog except it's in a fish. Why are there, there are so very few fish doctors? Well, our specialty in veterinary medicine is still emerging. There's not a lot of people who do what I do just because the training is not there. A lot of veterinary schools really don't have a strong aquatics program, and a lot of the learning has to come independently of the practitioner, which, again, a lot of people don't really want to do because there's such easy routes for doing large or small animal medicine. Have you ever been inside of a large uh, fish tank and done any surgeries? Thankfully, I have stayed pretty dry. Um, if we do need to take a fish out of a system for a surgery, they'll actually be mostly dry for the procedure. They'll either be on their side or on their backs, and we use an aquarium pump to pump anesthetized water through a tube into their mouth. It flushes over their gills, and the water will go back to the system. So most of the surgeries that we perform are actually out of the water. Ah, um, that's very good. Can you recall a memorable patient that you had? Oh yes, so. <laughs> oh. So this is Lemon. Lemon is a fancy goldfish. Um, basically a lot of fancy goldfish are just modifications of the comet goldfish. She originally presented to us with a broken right jaw. So with her, she actually received oral corrective surgery where we placed a few sutures right next to her jaw and were able to fix it so she was able to eat again. Oh, that's good. You're like Dr. Doodle. That's awesome. <laughs> thank you very much for the interview. Yes, thank you very much. It was very nice to meet you and to talk about my job. Oh, yes, absolutely. Do you eat sushi? <laughs> I oh. do eat sushi. However, I'm not really going to be eating any of the patients that I see. Um, I do work on a couple aquaculture farms that do catfish and tilapia and bass, um, but they're really not good sushi candidates. So. That's good to know, too. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you for the interview. Yes, thank you very much.